you're planning a move to Brevard County and Port St. John keeps popping up on the radar? Well, in this video, it's all about the section of Cocoa, Florida known as Port St. John. So stick around. My name is Eric Larkin and I'm a real estate agent here on the Space Coast. And when I'm not making videos like this, I'm helping people buy and sell real estate. So if you have plans of making a move, I am here to help. Port St. John is the northern end of unincorporated Cocoa, Florida in the 32927 zip code. Boundaries to the east would be the Indian River. Boundaries to the north is Kings Highway. The western boundaries is just on the other side of I-95 and the southern boundaries are either St. John's Parkway or Camp Road. Port St. John is not an official city or town, but a designated area, according to Wikipedia, located between Cocoa, Florida and Titusville, Florida. If you're living in the Port St. John area, your address, your postal code will still be Cocoa, Florida and not Port St. John. Population in Port St. John is just under 24,000. I would describe this section of Brevard. It's residential, but it's more on the rural side, maybe even country. Not that the homes are on, on large lots. Most of the homes in Port St. John are on a quarter acre lot or less. What I mean is more of the, the lifestyle. It's not uncommon to see folks on quad runners either riding down the street or on vacant lots. It's not uncommon to see bass boats or airboats boats parked on the driveway or alongside of the home. I see a lot of RVs parked by houses in the Port St. John area. And there's nothing wrong with any of this. I'm just pointing out that this seems to be more common in the Port St. John area versus other parts of Brevard County. I would say Port St. John is almost entirely residential, uh, made up of single family homes with some condominiums. The commercial parts of Port St. John you'll see along US-1 you'll see along Faye Boulevard. On the east end of town where Curtis meets Faye, there's some commercial there and also along Grissom. This is where you'll see the, the strip malls, the shopping plazas, the restaurants, some commercial space. If you're looking for the grocery stores, they'll be along US-1, which you'll find either a Publix or a Winn-Dixie. If you're looking to live near a hospital, Port St. John might not be the right option for you. They do have a parish medical center, a MedFast clinic on Saint Port St. John Parkway. However, the closest hospitals are either in North Titusville, which is the parish uh, hospital, or you have to go to Rockledge, which is where the Rockledge Regional Medical Center is. If the schools are important to you, this is what's for Port St. John residents. For elementary, choice of three, it'll either be Atlantis, Challenger 7, or Enterprise. And the middle school and high school both go to Space Coast High. And remember, school zones are always changing, so I, I highly recommend you go to one of the sites online to verify the school that's tied to a particular address, and you could also check out the ratings of the schools on these sites too. Here in Brevard County, we're very fortunate for the park systems that we have throughout the county and in the Port St. John area, they do not disappoint. On the east end of town, there's Robert Nichols Park, which is along US-1 on the Indian River, where you have pavilions, playgrounds, and restrooms. Just south of there is the Port St. John boat ramp. Heading west on Fay Boulevard is Fay Park, where there are baseball fields and tennis courts. And if you head all the way to the west end of Fay Boulevard is the Fay Wilderness Park. Besides having pavilions and playgrounds with trails going around the lake and places to launch your kayak or stand-up paddle boards, there's also a dog park there for your four-legged babies. And since having great parks and great schools need to be paid for by our property taxes, here's the millage rate for the Port St. John area for 2022. It was 1245. And if you're interested in seeing what the current millage rate is for this area or anywhere in Brevard County, I'll have a link in the description below. How do you like the video so far? Thumbs up are appreciated and if you haven't done so already hit that subscribe button. Port St. John is a great place to call home, especially if you're going to be working at the Kennedy Space Center. You have easy access to the main gate by, by heading north on US-1 to the 405, crossing the Indian River over the NASA Causeway. If you happen to be working at either the Cape Canaveral Space Force Base or near Port Canaveral, you head south on US-1 to 528, and that'll take you there very easily. Titusville is a short run up either 95 or US-1. 
I've even had folks who worked in East Orlando but wanted to live closer to the beach and they felt Port St. John area was a great compromise to both. So as you're looking for a home in the Port St. John area, I kind of like to divide Port St. John up into three areas. You have east of the railroad tracks, you have east of I-95, and you have west of I-95. So east of the railroad tracks is where you'll find most of the older homes in the Port St. John area. And when I say older, I mean built in the 60s and 70s, even though there's some newer homes that are east of the railroad tracks. This section is where you'll also find a lot of the smaller homes that are in Port St. John. There's quite a few homes that are under a thousand square feet in size, even though there are larger homes in this area too. And the area east of the tracks, most of the homes here are on city water and sewer. West of 95, a lot of the homes here were built in either the 90s or the 2000s. You could probably find some homes that were built in the 80s too. There's also new construction that's happening west of 95, and these are on scattered lots. East of 95 is where most of the home sales happen in Port St. John, which kind of makes sense since this is the biggest section of Port St. John. There are some older homes that are selling or are in this area that's closer to the railroad tracks. Most of the homes in this section of Port St. John were built in the 80s to early 2000s. There is new construction that's happening in this section of Port St. John that are also on scattered lots. So living in Port St. John, most of the homes are on city water and on septic systems. Most of the homes are not in a homeowners association. However, there are four HOAs that I'm aware of. You have the woods east of the tracks. You have Cypress Woods at the north end of town on Grissom. You have 100 acres almost to 95 and Vista Point on the west side of 95. Cypress Woods and The Woods are on city water and sewer. A little bit of The Woods are on septic. 100 acres, if you're living there, they encourage you to decorate for Christmas. So even if you don't live in 100 acres towards the holiday seasons, you should definitely drive through the community and see some amazingly decorated homes. To give you an idea of what it costs to live in Port St. John, according to our MLS, we had 456 sales in 2022. Most of them were single family homes. There were 35 that were condos. All of the condos were on the Indian River. They ranged in price from 220,000 to 320,000, and they were all either two or three bedroom condominiums. Single family home sales in Port St. John for 2022, there were over 400 homes to sell. They ranged in price from 130,000 to 970,000 with the median sales price of 305 grand. Your built were between 1946 and brand new construction and the home sizes were from 700 square feet to over 4,200 square feet. Most of these home sales were on dry lots and there was a handful of them that were waterfront, meaning they were on a lake or a pond. I hope this information helps you on your search for a home in the Brevard County in the Port St. John area. Remember, if you have any questions about your upcoming move, whether you're buying or selling, I am here to help. You could either call me, you can text me, you can comment below. If you're on social media, I am active on all of these sites. You can find me there and send a direct message. I really like to communicate, I am great with. My name is Eric Larkin with Real Brokers. I appreciate you tuning in and I'll see ya on the next show.